Hundreds of people were at St. Mary Redcliffe Church in Bristol this afternoon for the funeral of HTV presenter Annie St. John. Annie died on Monday, nearly six weeks after she was found collapsed at her home. The service was led by Canon David Frayne, who described Annie as a marvellous, outgoing personality who made every programme worth watching. St. Mary Redcliffe Church in the heart of Bristol can hold a thousand people. This afternoon, it was full. The congregation had been arriving two and a half hours before the service, people who knew Annie from the corner of their room to presenters who'd worked alongside her. Bruce Hawking was there to read the lesson. Also in church to line the aisles a dozen guide dogs. Annie had been president of the local guide dog association. Behind the coffin in the funeral procession, Annie's husband Michael, alongside her mother. Her sister followed on with other members of the family. In public, they masked their grief today, having spent six weeks alongside Annie as she clung to life in hospital. She'd stayed in a coma following a suspected drugs overdose. Today, the vicar of St. Mary Raycliffe, Canon David Frayne, asked the question being thought by so many. Why had she done it? It had left everyone perplexed and devastated. So what will Annie have taken with her into the life beyond? That marvellous, outgoing personality. That smile. Eyes that only sparkled, but told their own tale as to whether the next programme really was worth watching or not. The eyes that sometimes made the last programme even better than it really was. It's a thousand pities that all these talents and gifts and attributes in a marvellous public ministry were eclipsed and were overtaken by that private and overwhelming black spot six weeks ago. We really do need all of us to look after each other and allow ourselves to be looked after more than we often do. At the end of his address, Canon Frayne quoted a viewer from Somerset who said, there's not enough darkness in the world to put out the light of so bright a candle. The service had been short. Annie's coffin was taken for cremation at South Bristol afterwards. It was private, only the family present. She was to have a police escort for that final journey. Today, the traffic stopped for Annie St. John. It was good to see so many of you at the church and of course so many of you told us that you would like to have been there but whether you were there or not we all had one thing in common and that was to say farewell to a very special friend.